Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Pastor Stephen Jurdy at Zion Lutheran Church in Wausau, Wisconsin, and Bethany Lutheran Church in Anawa, here to share with you a word at the middle of the week. Two weeks from today, I believe, yes, two weeks from today, we are going to celebrate Ash Wednesday, which is the beginning of Lent. Next week, I'm going to talk more about what the season of Lent is, where it comes from, what it means, and how we observe Lent. But today, I just want to make a simple observation about the very heart of Lent and how that very heart of Lent applies to a common problem that we experience in the church. The very heart of Lent is this. It's a time for being renewed in our faith. It's a time for our faith in Jesus Christ and in his atoning work on the cross to be strengthened for us. That's one reason why during the season of Lent, ending with Holy Week, we will read through the passion of our Lord and meditate again on what he has suffered for us on the cross by rooting ourselves, by being rooted through the word of God in that passion of our Lord. We are being strengthened for faith in him. Now, when we talk about faith in him, that makes me think of a, something that I often hear in the church, and I would guess that you've heard it as well. It's when someone who maybe isn't very active in the church or somebody who doesn't seem to be working very hard at living a particularly Christian life, at least to the outward eye, says, don't worry, I believe. Don't worry, pastor, I believe in Jesus. And sometimes that means it's somebody who is struggling with something in their life that prevents them from living a more deeply Christian life in terms of their outward observances, but perhaps in the quiet areas of their life, they are working very hard to be Christian. But at other times, what I seem to get from that statement and from the people who say it is they are sometimes saying to me something like, don't worry, when I die, I'm okay because I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he existed. I believe that there is a God who's benevolent and loving and that Jesus has shown that he's benevolent and loving. And therefore, when I die, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be included in that afterlife that we all care about and talk about. But is that what the Christian life really is? I think a lot of people think it is. I think a lot of people think that the Christian life is a matter of accepting Jesus Christ so that when you die, you'll go to heaven. It's sort of like pay the premium so that you have the insurance policy you need to get out of earth okay. Is that the Christian faith? It is not. And so to talk about Lent, to talk about being rooted more deeply in the faith that Jesus died for us, is to pause and ask ourselves that very serious question, what exactly is the Christian faith? What is it to believe in Jesus? And of course, there's no better place to turn than Holy Scripture, for we are told it is through the Word of God that our faith is strengthened. And so what are we told in the Word of God? In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, Jesus says the following, beginning at verse 21 in chapter 7 of Matthew. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. There he's saying something very clear. Just because you call Jesus Lord, just because you call on Jesus as Lord, doesn't mean you've entered the kingdom of heaven. Just because you sort of believe in your head and you've put your Christian faith sort of tucked away somewhere tidy in your Christian life, that doesn't mean that you've entered the kingdom of heaven, but rather that you do the will of the Father who sent Jesus. And so then that begs the question, well, what is the will of the Father of Jesus? And when we go to John chapter 6, verse 40, we read the following. Again, this is Jesus speaking. In John chapter 6, verse 40, he says the following, This is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. 
Now that verse again speaks about resurrection, it speaks about the last day, it says believe in Jesus and you have eternal life. That seems to connect with what people are saying when they say don't worry, I believe in Jesus, I'm good, I don't have to be involved in church, I don't have to do all that churchy stuff, I don't have to necessarily live in a certain way, I believe in Jesus, I'm going to heaven, leave me alone. But when Jesus describes faith in the Gospel of John, when he describes faith anywhere in the Gospels, he uses very rich imagery. Imagery like eating bread, drinking living waters, following, walking after Jesus in the light of life. He says, abide in me, abide in my commandments. This is also in the Gospel of John chapter 15 and going into 16. Abide in me, do my word. And so then we turn back to the word of God and we say, well, what is it Jesus would have us do? What is it that is part and parcel of believing in Jesus? And as soon as we ask that question, we come up against these promises that Jesus speaks. Promises like, this do in remembrance of me. Take, eat, this is my body. This do in remembrance of me. Well now, if you believe in Jesus, do you believe in the supper that Jesus gives? Do you believe in those words, take, eat, this is my body? this do in remembrance of me. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. What is the role of baptism in your life if you believe in Jesus? Do you trust the baptism that he has given? Do you trust the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit that, he's, that he has given? Are you using that name to call upon God in times of trouble? Jesus says, unless you repent, you shall all perish. Where is the life of repentance in your life today? Jesus says, turn the other cheek. Jesus says, bless your enemies. Jesus says, give to those who ask. Where is the role of generosity? Where is the stewardship of the church? Where is your blessing of your enemies? Where is your service of the poor and the hungry? To believe in Jesus is to take all that Jesus gives to us. It's to eat the bread that he is, to drink the living waters that he is, to walk in the light that he is. And so when he gives these great promises, when he gives these words for us to do, we're taking hold of that life and they're for us to live now. The Christian faith is not an insurance policy for when we're dead. The Christian faith is the biggest love that has ever flowered on this beautiful earth that God has made. And to be a Christian is to live in the way of that love. If you don't want the biggest love that has ever shown its face on this earth, if you don't want to receive that love as Jesus gives it to you in his supper, in his baptism, in his word, in the life of repentance, why don't you want it? Do you believe in him? Are you taking him as he gives himself to you? If we don't take that life Jesus authors, the life of hungering and thirsting for righteousness, the life of meekness, the life of peacemaking, the life of blessing our enemies, the life of calling upon God in prayer, praise, and thanksgiving, then are we trusting him to give us our life? Imagine this. Imagine that um, a man named Calvin uh, a man named Calvin, I, I use that name because I don't know anybody named Calvin, see, so I'm, I'm not targeting any, anyone. Um, I know, uh, let's say there's a man named Calvin and Calvin dies. And Calvin appears on the last day before the throne of judgment and he's brought forward to the Almighty upon his throne. And the book is opened and the Almighty says the following, Calvin, I can see here that you believed me when I said I sent Jesus and that I would raise you from the dead and give you eternal life. And Calvin says, yes, I did. I believe that. I'm so glad to be here, Lord. And then God says, I see that when I said, take, eat, this is my body, this do in remembrance of me, you did not believe me. You did not take my supper. I see when I said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you did not make sure that your children and grandchildren are baptized. You did not believe me when I spoke those words. I see that when I said, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. 
I see when I said, call upon me in the day of trouble and I will answer, you did not take me at my word. I see that when I said, bless your enemies, you instead held grudges. I see when I said, repent, you were not repenting of your sins. Calvin, I'm not your insurance policy. Is that what we want that meeting with God to look like? Do we want God to ask us, where have you been when I set my table? Did you think my table was just something for after you're dead? Where were you on the way of love? Do you think my love is just something for after you're dead? Don't let that be the day to which you come. God has a life for you to live now. He has promises for you to trust now, a supper for you to receive now, a way for you to walk now that is marked by challenge, that is marked indeed by hardship and doubt and question, but just for that reason, it is marked by the cross that redeems. And it marks us as those who belong to the one who conquered through the cross, and therefore it is a way marked by joy. It is a way marked by joyful repentance, being able to stand before God daily and saying, so here's my sins. I mean, have you done that? Do you end the day by saying, well, how did I sin today, Lord? Here's what I remember. Probably you know more than I do. So I'm confessing all the ones I remember, and Lord, please forgive the rest as well. There's joy in being able to talk to God that way. Have you been to his supper? Have you lived in his way of generosity? Take that life. Take that bread, let your teeth sink into it, consume that living water, let it be the deep drink of your life. This is ultimately what the season of Lent is about, but it's also what the whole Christian life is about. It's about living in the peace of God that transcends all understanding. We'll talk a bit more about next week. In the meantime, know that I am praying for you. I don't even know all of you who watch this, but I am praying. Uh, for the church. I'm praying for our neighbors. I'm praying for our enemies. And uh, I ask God to bless all of you. Please share this video. Please like it. Share it with someone who maybe needs to hear it or just repost it on your timeline here on Facebook. And have a blessed day. Thanks.